Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today, I would like to tell you about Brower characters, sometimes it's called modular characters. We'll see what that is. Um, it's kind of the idea to completely ignore the ground field, which turns out to be the correct idea in the setup. Uh, because kind of the problem is that if you work in the round field, I tried to explain that last time, and the ground field happens to be finite characteristic, like characteristic three or whatever, then usually a lot of things get zero that you don't want to be zero. Um, that's bad, but maybe you can just ignore that. And yes, you can, and you end up with the notion of a bar character. So the underlying representation that I like to think about right now is the regular representation. Um, if you like to think of in terms of geometric objects, basically it's acting on the Cayley graph. So here you display, I've displayed the action of D4 acting on itself. So that's a regular representation. Everything acts on itself. And it turned out that the character of the regular representation was really simple. It was the order of the group on the trivial identity class. So of the identity class of uh, the conjugacy class, sorry, the conjugacy class of the identity element. And it was zero everywhere else on all other conjugacy classes. It's a very simple character. And that works for pretty well. So the regular representation had a really nice character in some sense, it's simple, and it encodes all of the group. The huge problem that we are facing in characteristic, well, bad characteristic, P divides the order of the group, it's, it's really a huge problem, is that this character now is, is constant zero, right? So it already has a lot of zeros here. It of course stays zero, but if P divides the order of the group, uh, whatever, the order of the group is nine and P is three, then, then it's just dead, you're just zero. So the character of the regular representation is constant zero uh, in characteristic zero. Uh, and that's just that's just tremendously huge problem. In some sense, that says you, can, you cannot do character theory in any satisfying way. The character of a representation of a very, very natural one is constant zero. That's really, really bad. It actually gets worse. So I'm very surprised that Brower actually made it work in the end because it's really, really bad. So here um, I've displayed the character table of S4 uh, using the code in the description that you can run in Magma. Um, and the only interesting bit here is this little part down here, are the values of the character. And you could think of it as a matrix, right? It, it looks like a square matrix. So why not treat it as a square matrix? So that's what I did here. As you can see, this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, uh, fifth row, and just put in the matrix, and I ask, in this case, Sage, what is the rank of the matrix, and I get this result here, depending on the underlying field or on the underlying ring. So as long as you're in a characteristic that doesn't divide uh, the order of S4, so S4 is, or the order of S4 is uh, 24, so the prime divisors you must watch out for here are two and three, and everything else should be fine. So here I have a five, and uh, so this is supposed to be F5, and this is this is Z or Q or whatever, complex numbers or whatever you like, so some characteristic zero. And as you can see, uh, the matrix is a full rank, right? It's a five by five matrix, and it's a full rank. And that's one of the main statements of character theory. The characters are linear independent. Just <laughs> in this matrix formulation, it really just means the matrix is a full rank. And that's just wrong in the funny characteristics two and three, where the ranks drop. So in characteristic three, apparently the rank is four, and in characteristic two, it's it's really, really low. It's just two. You kind of can see that it collapses in characteristic two. So in characteristic two, those two will be the same because you can ignore the sign. Those two will be also the same. But uh, let me see. Um, the sum of this one and this one is actually the, the last one. So. It's really just a rank two. So you have a lot of dependencies in the characters, right? So another huge problem. We already have this problem that an arbitrary uh, p-fold sum of a character is just constant zero because you take everything times p. The regular representation has also constant zero characters. So certainly characters can't distinguish representations anymore. Uh, just take, as I said, just, as I said, just take any representation p times and has the same character as a regular representation. Mm, that's already bad, but here my naively specialized characters have dependencies, so they don't form a basis anymore, and we even have the wrong count. So characters don't distinguish representations. We don't know what to count. And that looks really bad, right? It's a really bad setup, and it looks like character theory is just dead in characteristic p. Um, turns out no, and this was a really good idea of Brower actually, and the corresponding characters 
are called Brower characters. They are not these characters, because these characters, which are just the traces of the matrices, they just can't work, as I'm trying to explain here, right? They, they don't distinguish anything, and they give the wrong count. That's just really, really bad. <laughs> but Brower characters, well, they're not super good, but they're still much more, more preferable than those characters. Yeah. And Brower's idea is very, very simple. It's <laughs> great. So Brower just says the following. Okay, taking the trace of a matrix, and just here in this case, just taking the trace, and then interpret this in my field of characteristic P, whatever, maybe P bar, or whatever it is in my field. It's just a bad idea. It just doesn't work. So Brower proposes the following strategy. Well, the trace is just the sum of the eigenvalues. And you can see it, you can actually easily show because um, every group element has a finite order, it right? has some order n. Let's say um, the eigenvalues are always roots of unity. And Brower just says, okay, that's great. So we have some roots of unities floating around. I just pretend that my roots of unities are complex numbers and not in my ground field, right? Ignore the ground field. I just, I just pretend they're complex numbers. And whatever then comes out uh, as their sum is just what I define as a character. Right, so it's a, the character, the Brower character, is for modular representations, but it's still a complex number, which is kind of a cool trick. Uh, the 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 representations, the traces in the field just vanish. So I just pretend they don't by using this eigenvalue trick, and there you go, I have a complex number instead of a, a zero, for example. So really, it's just, it's just an amazing trick. Just ignore that you have a problem and just pretend that you have complex numbers. This is kind of cool. So here in this example. Um, what I did is I again just took the matrix here. You can read off the rows, and I used different fields. So uh, again, Q adjoint some root of unity because that's what I needed here. Characteristic two and characteristic three, and these are both bad. For, so this is an element of S four. So characteristic two and three are actually both bad for S four. And well, the complex number answer is we have root of unity and whatever. And as you can see here, you get basically the same gives you the same answer. But now Z2 uh, is not the complex root of unity, it's the root of unity in the field. And um, turns out that Bauer then would just say, okay, just pretend that this Z2 is not a, an element of the field, but pretend that this actually is a complex number and takes a corresponding uh, trace. Um, you will see that something goes wrong in characteristic three in this case, and I'll explain in a second what, what goes wrong. Okay, so Bauer's idea, just ignore that you have a ground field. Just work on the complex numbers. The Brower characters are complex characters. They are characters defined using the eigenvalues and just pretend that they are complex numbers. So this is a complex value function. It goes from the, the regular group elements. I'm going to explain what regular group elements are in a second to the complex numbers. It looks very similar to the classical characters. And they do almost what you want. So they have this basis property, which is really awesome. So they form a basis. Um, and they have this distinguishing property, which is not quite as strong as, uh, as the one of the complex numbers, because it only really works uh, if you already know that your representations are simple. But still, for simple representations, simple representations are equivalent if and only if the Brouwer characters are the same. Right? Co comparison over C, you get a stronger statement. It holds for arbitrary representations. But it is still pretty good compared to what the characters did to us before. Okay, and let me just finish um, what it, by saying what the regular representations are. And these are just the elements whose order are, are prime to P. Um, so if your characteristic is three, for example, you don't want to look at elements of order three. So this element here has order three, and you can see it in the, the eigenvalues of, the, uh, of this element. It's just wrong. You just get one, 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 one all the time. So you ignore those elements. You ignore exactly the elements whose order divide your fields, and all the others are called regular. So here, this element is regular in characteristic three because it has uh, a characteristic two because it has order three. Right. So that's why the regular. And as you can see, the eigenvalues are perfect. You can just pretend they are complex numbers. Okay. So if you if you just take those elements, regular ones, these are is now your indexing set for the simple representations. The regular elements in the group, and you can compute the um, well, conjugacy clauses and the Brouwer characters. So in particular, right now, the statement is then the isomorphism clauses of simple representations are now the conjugacy clauses of this P regular element, ignore everything else. As soon as the order divides, uh, so the order of your element divides the characteristic, ignore it. Okay? 
just it's gone and all the others just pretend that they are complex values and in practice this works um, heuristically as follows it's not quite true but heuristically it works as follows you just take the, the character table over c um, and uh, if you have a smart enough computer program like magma here that you can run yourself i'll link it to the description then basically it tells you in characteristic two that's what i'm taking here in characteristic two there's one bad uh well conjugacy clause you cross it out it's not a regular and whatever remains will be a simple character um as you can see some of them will collapse so here they were different because you have this little minus sign here if i cross out this one they are not the same and but otherwise you just have the, the other one then and we have this a root of unity, which you pretend now is a complex number, and we get the corresponding Brouwer character table. It doesn't quite work in general, because in general, um, the simple representations you see by using this method, they're just crossing out the non regular elements, might not be simple anymore. So the Brouwer characters might need to be refined. So computing Brouwer characters is still a, a bit tricky. Anyway, let me repeat kind of the main idea of Brouwer is simply ignore that you're working in a field of finite characteristic just pretend you have complex numbers and then kind of everything is everything is repaired in huge quotation marks all right there's one more thing i would like to tell you about so we already saw this here if the order of your element is bad you kind of can't can't do anything and that's related to fresh stream uh fresh stream is this nice equation here and actually holds in characteristic p in particular, this equation holds in characteristic P. Uh, why does it hold? Well, because you expand it and the binomials all vanish because they're all resolved by P, basically. Uh, so this just says there are no primitive P roots of unity. So you can't play the trick anymore. They are, the eigenvalues are just all boring. Um, and Bauer's idea is then not just to go to the complex numbers, but also to ignore these elements. And it turns out, and that's kind of a cool statement, that these are the only elements you need to ignore. All others are okay. Right? So only ignore these non-regular elements and you're good. And kind of you need to ignore them anyway because you have this a non-existence of piece roots of entities. Okay, so if you want to like to Google it, let me just mention that this is not the standard name of uh, this theorem or this concept or whatever. It's usually called freshman stream, but nowadays we should all use non-gendered language. So my way of using non-gendered language here is just, I call it fresh stream. Which uh, sounds very nice, actually, I think. Anyway, um, this was just a side remark. So uh, if you want to Google it, you probably won't find fresh stream. Just keep that in mind. But anyway, we would like to use non-gendered language. OK, so let me summarize. Brower's idea is fresh stream shows us that we need to ignore. There's nothing we can do. We need to ignore elements of uh, with the wrong order anyway. Ignore them and otherwise pretend you are in the complex numbers. That's your Brower character, and the Brower character basically still has the same properties as the usual character, which I find very surprising if you just look at the naive version of defining characters, which is just so bad and so wrong and doesn't do anything really useful for you. Um, anyway, I hope you like Brower characters. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.